Hello everyone, Luke Rines. Luke Rines is back. Oh my god, look at that stunning sexual superbike back there. That is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Oh my god, Luke Rines just wants to touch it. He wants to touch it everywhere. Touch it everywhere, even on brake discs. <laughs> wow, that's stunning. Because what you're about to learn here today is actually going to be quite an interesting video for you. Because we are about to take the existing factory Kawasaki Superbike brake discs because they've actually hit the 4mm limit um, and need replacing. But instead of just replacing them with the factory Superbike uh, discs, is we're upgrading to EBC Superbike brake discs. Whoa. For the ZX-10R, Kawasaki ZX-10R Superbike. An absolute supersonic insanity and the scariness from that Superbike engine and the ZX-10R when they're and these modern superbikes and the speed limiters are removed they're absolutely insane they will go over 200 miles an hour which with ease with these modern superbikes once you de-restrict the computer system and let her be free which is absolutely brilliant absolutely amazing so find out here at Luke Rides as you're about to get here for YouTube first and probably one of the only videos here on YouTube only one only workshop videos are fitting these EBC's Superbike brakes to the Kawasaki ZX10R. Uh, this was before the ZX10R was uh, was possibly had the option of uh, Brembo's. Um, but oh, what a stunning sexual superbike she is! And we are about to ride with fun uh, when she's finally back on the road. Let's hit the intro. Get working. Get work. Get working on the sexual superbike and have some fun. Here we go. It's showtime. For the top bolt, I'm going to use an extension on the 6mm. That was tight. When I take the caliper bolts out, these happen to be the same size, but I just like to do top bottom. And then I'll give the caliper a little bit of a wiggle. And then you don't really want it hitting there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the caliper and I'm twisting it towards me. And what's happening there is it's opening up the brake pads and that's saving me from having to open it up. So you can see I've opened them up a little. This is a tool that I use for opening them up and it is from a 19, don't quote me, a 1968 Jaguar. <laughs> and you can just pop it in and then twist them and the pistons go all the way back in. So if you now have a look at your brake reservoir, you should see that the fluid is near, has gone up a bit, yeah? Correct. So I'm now gonna take the front wheel off the motorcycle. So although you have a spindle going through, this side of the spindle, which undoes, is being held in place by two pinch pins, which are six millimeter. And you can see that there's a split right here so right at the bottom of the, you've got two pinch pins. They're not particularly tight. If you over tighten them, you can end up getting cracks here and here. So I'm just going to undo them. This is six mil. They're usually not the most tightest in the world. There you go, that's one starting to undo. Make sure you get it right in. Push it right in. And I'm just doing it on a 3.8. And there you go. It should be that easy to undo them. They really aren't that tight. <clears throat> if you if you find if you over tighten them, you can end up cracking here, and then things get bloody dangerous. And that's it. This side loosened off nicely. Now there are pinch pins on the other side, and I don't usually undo them. And the reason I don't undo them is because they're holding 
the other side of the spindle. So like, um, <clears throat> this part of the spindle is quite long, and then there's a short piece. And if I undo the other side, the short piece gets loose. Mm -hmm. So as I start to undo this one, that one rotates, and I can't get the spindle out. Okay, so two pinch pins. Mm. There's your other side of the spindle, and I'm not going to undo these pinch pins. A lot of people make the mistake of undoing them. What will happen is this part here will rotate, the entire spindle will rotate, and I'll never get it undone. So you don't actually have to undo this side. So I'm removing the pinch pins now. You can see there's a little bit of corrosion on them. You'd be a little bit corroded if this is where you lived on a motorcycle. Mm. So again, a little bit of corrosion that's to be expected. But uh, one thing you're not seeing, and this is by the manufacturer, you're not seeing any lubrication and you're not seeing any Loctite on here. Mm. And that is exactly how I'm going to put it back in. I don't see any green, red or blue Loctite. And I definitely don't see any lubrication. Mm. So no matter how much you want to do it, do not, because the manufacturer has decided after their billions and billions of dollars of education... So I'm now going to undo the spindle. So I've loosened off this side of the bike, 22 mil. I'm just going to put my socket in. This is going to be fairly tight. Impact gun because we just use an impact gun. To undo it, <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, that's the sort of power we needed. But it's a very fine thread. So you'll notice that it takes a while to undo. What does that mean? Fine. Lots of thread. Yeah. Here we go. Whoa. Spindle. You see this corrosion on the end of it? Mm, yeah. That's probably what was stopping us. And now comes the wheel. On the wheel are what's called spacers. So these here, this is a dust seal, and then there'll be an oil seal, and you can see there's a bearing behind there. The whole point of this spacer is to fit in. It also aids against uh, dust getting in and stuff like that. But, you know, it's there to just kind of steady things. Um, so they're going to get cleaned up. See, it's a little bit dirty. And there'll be one on the other side. So here's the spacer on the other side. And again, we're going to give that a good clean up. And then you've got a dust seal for the actual wheel bearing. And I've got to say, they're, they're feeling really nice. So. I've no interest in messing with them. When we take off this rotor, we've also got to take this ABS ring and refit it to the new rotors. So these are the standard rotors that you get on a ZX-10R. And the reason we're swapping them out is because they've just gone out of tolerance. You can tell that because on here, it clearly says the minimum width is five millimeters. The vernier gauge, I am getting One, two, four millimeters. So that's why they're being replaced. We're replacing them with these EBC XCs, which are seven millimeters. And again, their minimum width is five millimeters. This bike's done about uh, 9,000 miles approximately, and it's in need of new discs. So I'm going to crack these off. And again, I'm only using the 3.8 extend. <laughs> yeah, give me a hand. Cheers. <clears throat> I'm only using the 3.8 if you have to feel the need to use larger tools on these. And you're overdoing it slightly, overcompensating. <clears throat> Make sure that you get your Allen head deep in. Your hand is not a hammer. Okay, deep in, here we go, 3.8. Nice and easy, right? If you've got to use bigger tools, you're overcompensating for something. 
I'd just like a shout out to Milwaukee for building these awesome, awesome tools. Maybe they're not the most powerful, but I do like them. If anyone would like to sponsor me with Snap-on. So, the first thing to notice is that these do not have lubrication on them, but they do have red Loctite as per what Kawasaki would have put on them originally. And I am going to add Loctite 243 um, once I've cleaned the uh, threads up. You wouldn't want these coming undone under heavy <laughs> Kawasaki. What? Huh. Well, that's interesting because you've actually got, like, uh, so that's the face that you see, but then you actually flip the, the, the factory super white disc over and then you see the part that is not painted gold. It's flat. It's a flat metal surface. Well, it must be for the hub. Oh, look at that. It's always a good time to clean your alloys at this point, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Now you've got access to it. <laughs> Apart from random Google photos of angels and then maybe just crying. <laughs> Phoning up the benefactors. Oh, there's some tears of angels and oh, I want to spray on my wheels. <laughs> <laughs> there might be certain loot, uh, uh, certain looks in the. Uh... But you can see just with a microfiber and some tears of angels, <laughs> all of a sudden this alloy is looking really nice. And I'm picking up all of the crud and it's leaving a really nice finish. It's really important to make sure that your mating surfaces are clean of any debris. I mean, I just found some, I don't know, whoever caked on all of that. I mean, they really went to town with the Loctite. Whoever added the Loctite got it on the mating surfaces. So look at it. So I'm having a bit of a trouble making sure the mating surfaces are absolutely mint. There's your before. Have you got any foam? You can take a photo. It's up to you. And here's your after. When it comes to Loctite, clearly you only need a little and it goes a long way. So the way I apply it is like this. I never understood why the entire threads have to be Loctited. Um, and I've never seen, I haven't personally seen a manufacturer do it. You only need a few threads to, to lock. Manufacturers probably only do that for cost saving measures, but I, this whole lock tight in the entire thread makes no sense at all. I'm using um, 243, which is my favorite because it holds on for dear life. And the last thing you want is a problem. Again, I've only wetted up a few of the threads. That's all you need. It's amazing. <laughs> And that's 
because there's a little edge underneath these that then fits in beautifully with the disc. And I'll make sure that the Allen head is right in there. Lovely. I'll check the torque once I've done both sides, but for the moment I'm talking by hand. Let's flip it over. Get this side off, and again, I'm only using the 3 8, and I'm making sure that I get the Allen key right in. All that's going to happen one, <laughs> you get it slightly in, you think that's enough, and then you go to undo it. Well, what is going to stop you? From getting like, you know, if there if there's full of rust and crud inside of here, what's stopping you from getting like a screwdriver or something, right? And dig it out, dig it out, spend your time, dig it out, so that you can then get your Allen key in and not round it off. Can you imagine the trouble we'd have to go to? So get yeah. your Allen key in as deep as it will go, and it won't round anything off. <laughs> There's only one way round that this goes, I'm sure. Maybe there isn't, I don't know. I'm not going to take the risk. The way it comes off is the way it goes back on, in my mind. I'm not going to... I'm not talking about orientation. I'm talking about taking it off and flipping it over. See, I can see a number on it saying 166. When I put this back on, that number 166 is going to be facing up. <laughs> It's pretty corroded, a bit dirty. I'm going to give it a good clean up. Go back on the correct orientation with that 166 facing upwards. And then here's that disc coming off. You can join its brethren in there. And I'm going to clean off these mating surfaces just to make sure that there isn't any, as you can see there, what's the point in putting the disc down on top of that material, it's got to go. I'm going to clean it right up. If I've given it a bit of a scrub, eh? I mean, it's going to get dirty in normal life anyway, but you can already see this crud come off of it. And since we're fitting new discs, there we go, it's nice and tidy. <laughs> When it goes on the bike, it looks fairly new. Super bike. And matches. Don't forget everybody at Luke Rides, when you're working hard on super bikes and motorcycles, always get that cup of coffee and a cup of tea in you. That cleaned up beautifully. Nice and easy, it's just a spacer. I think if there was anything on there, it was only a light film of dirt. So there's the 
as a before and after. So you can see there's actually, there is wear on this spacer. Okay, can you see that wear? And that wear is where this spacer has spun at some point. Okay, because it's consistent. Do you see that? See the three shiny lines? Mm. So at some point, what would generally happen is this spacer would be... And, and it won't move. But at some point it has spun and it's caused those grooves. You, and you can hardly feel them, but they are there. And again, this is the near side spacer. And that one's cleaning up quite nicely too. And I guess there's just a light bit of dirt. There's certainly no grease on it, but the, uh, they're coming out a treat. They're coming out lovely. This is what we like. The wheel back on now, which is a pretty straightforward process of just slotting it in. If, luckily, we've got ours up in the air, so it's not bashing mold or anything. Let's get those spacers back in, right? So here goes the first one. Looking good. Here goes the near side spacer, looking good. Now all I've got to do is get the wheel back into position. I'm going to have to lift it up slightly whilst placing the spindle in. Let's hope I don't knock any of those spacers out. There, 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 right there. Shit. Oh, okay. So all we're going to do now is get the spindle in and start threading it in by hand. Remember, the two locking pins that came out had no lubrication and they certainly didn't have any Loctite on them. So given that Kawasaki, in their infinite wisdom, have done it this way, that is exactly how I'm going to do it. Isn't that nice with the, the champered heads? Do you see that? Mm. So they've actually machined material away to make them just a little bit lighter. Super bike. So now that the spindle's in and tightened up, I'm going to tighten them up. I'm starting by hand. Just nipping them up. <laughs> See the gap closing now. So you can imagine these pinch bolts don't have to be super tight. So now the gap is almost up, you can't even see it. And I'm just going to tighten up these pinch bolts. If you over tighten the pinch bolts, what will happen? is it will end up cracking. I love this tool, it just fits so beautifully. There we go. And that's about as hand tight as I want them to be. And you can see there's like no gap now. It's really closed this in together. It's locked, although this we tighten this up, it's locked it in. Look at that, it spins beautiful, right? Beautiful, Governor. Okay, wow. let's put those calipers back together. Let's start by releasing the caliper and see if we can get them actually installed. If I'm going to struggle or anything like that, I can always go to this tool, which just helps spread them apart a little bit more. Cool. Caliper bolts going back in. I'm never keen on using a power tool to, in case they cross thread. 
Can you imagine getting the fork tube out of this? Taking it all apart and having to separate these two in order to get a replacement. I don't think you can even get that part on its own, can you? Talk settings would you recommend if you had to? 50 millimeters. I don't know. You should look it up. Might be 35 for all you know. Look at it this way. I'm going I'm, I'm to argue with everyone now. Look at it this way, right? There's a reason that the bolts are going down this way. Because to be fair, when this wheel's rotating and the pads are crushing onto the disc, the forces are not in that direction, are they? They're not in that direction. It, they're in this direction, yeah? So you've got rotation, the forces are in this direction, the pads are grabbing on, everything's being yanked that way. So these can be 30 newton meters, these can be 50 newton meters. There's no, apart from tearing forces that way, there's no actual forces that way. I think about, <clears throat> I don't know, 35, 40 newton meters, something like that. Just to make sure that they are not just split at the bottom, but split at the top so there's an even gap. And then I'm gonna offer them to the rotor. on there we go again being careful with that ABS sensor yes, so I think it's safe that uh, I can now install the ABS sensor oh, the super bike that makes quite a difference knowing that you've got that extra braking power and when you put on the anchors, the computer is going to assist you to scrub off that speed at over 200 miles an hour, over 100 miles an hour on these superbikes, without you locking the front or rear wheel, and then ditching your superbike and destroying it and hurting yourself at the same time. Very impressive technology. So, I'm just going to use that little six mil just to do up the sensor. It's probably like eight newton meters. It's not going to be anything exciting. There we go. And then again, I always do these up by hand rather than with a power tool, because if you cross thread them, I suspect you can't buy this section on its own. And why would you want to wreck? Everybody's fun. <laughs> well, being... Buying new forks when mm. you could have done it by hand. Okay, now I'm just going to do them up. So what we're going to do now, because the fluid is nice and high, I'm going to use the front brake and I'm going to pump it gently. And what that's going to do is it's going to cause all of the pistons to push against those new pads, both sides. So here we go. See how it does? No, no brake at all. I can go right back to the throttle. And the what's way. happening is the fluid's going to go lower as the pistons, all eight pistons are now being pushed. Okay, see the fluid just starting to go down, and I'm starting to feel it now. And now you get resistance. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have working <laughs> brakes, and it doesn't hurt just to go over a few things. Yep, we've tightened them up. That was tightened up. Yep, yep, I've tightened all of this up. You know, just a quick go over what you've done. Don't put the tools away without being sure, but that's feeling really good. And it's not binding like it was before with the uh, with the old pads and the old discs. It was binding quite badly, and that's just beautiful. Hmm. The Luke Crow really hopes you all enjoyed that that very fascinating workshop video. I have to work on the front end of the ZX10R Superbike. 
uh, how to work in this area, how to remove even the factory brake discs uh, here at Lou Crides. Well, you would just learn how to do that, which would be broken into separate videos here for the channel to make it easier to find the exact video that you're looking for if you're working in this area of the ZX10 Superbike or looking at upgrading the disc to the EBC Superbike brake discs. So great stuff. Uh, I look forward to catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you all had a fun time here at Luke Rides. Brilliant. Catch you later everyone. Bye. The way we... The little rascal has spirit. Has water. This is the end of the trail for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, kid. That is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Mm -hmm.